What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hey Bucket Live. I'm your host, Sammy Glantz. This week, we have on a very special guest, five-time SEC Coach of the Year, seven-time SEC Champion, and leading the Gators to two back-to-back national championships. Welcome to the show, Coach Tim Walton. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Sammy. Appreciate it. We should start with your baseball playing days. I'm going to take you back to 1994. You and the Oklahoma Sooners win a national championship. Then you go on to play pro ball in the Phillies organization. What kind of led to your transition going from a baseball player to now changing directions completely and becoming a softball coach at the University of Oklahoma under coach Patty Gasso? Yeah, I, I, I mean, ironically, um, I think my turn from coaching baseball, well, first playing to coaching baseball, then to, to having an opportunity to coach softball, um, came from, um, you know, meeting my wife and uh, eventually marrying her. And she's a former student athlete. She played uh, basketball. And so just sharing the same goals and the same drive and the same work ethic that I had that um, when the opportunity presented itself to me to, to, to become a softball coach, um, I jumped in with uh, both feet and um, it really felt like I um, had the professionalism to, to go from being a baseball player to baseball coach to, to then becoming a softball coach. And um, the transition was fun. And you know, I learned a lot from Patty and Melissa Lombardi and Jennifer Jaime at the time, Rocha now, but I uh, learned a lot about dealing with, um, you know, softball student athletes and the challenges of the game of softball. And um, it was a, it was a lot of fun for me to, to really, it almost felt like starting over and I had to learn a whole, um, you know, bunch of new things, but the game of baseball and the game of softball, the, the bat and ball, I mean, they're, they're so closely related in regards to the skill training that um, it was a lot easier of a transition than I might've thought. You go on to Wichita State before you end up at Florida. What were some of the biggest factors and fundamentals that you wanted your program to be when you first became the coach at Florida? All of my steps really helped um, my growth and my development and really kind of learned what my brand was going to be like and, you know, what I wanted my, um, you know, fundamental training to be and how I wanted to teach and how I wanted to grow. But I can tell you that without being an assistant coach at Oklahoma and then without being a, a head coach at a, at a smaller school, the beauty of being a head coach at the smaller school is I was everything. I was trainer. I was equipment manager. I was field coordinator. I was the janitor. I was you know, secretary at times, although I'm not a very good secretary. Um, I was assistant coach, pitching coach, hitting coach, base running coach. I did it all. And I think that really helped me. There's no way I would have been able to be um, as successful at Florida without that training, you know, and it really was hands-on training. And, uh, I really do believe if I gave any advice to young coaches or young players that aspire to be coaches, I think it's really wise for you to, um, you know, take things incrementally, um, be careful what you wish for, but take things incrementally because I think the professional growth that I was able to learn at Wichita state in a smaller athletic department, a very family athletic department, I learned a lot. And, and that training has really helped me, um, transition into being the, the head coach at the University of Florida now for 16 seasons. Being one of the biggest powerhouses in the game right now, and it's so it's been so incredible to watch over the years. How have you guys been able to maintain that, to be able to stay at the very top year after year? Yeah, I mean, I think number one, um, I think we have a, you know, a pretty good family atmosphere here at, at Florida and that you know, we, we take in all, all people. We have players from all different parts of the country. We have players from different backgrounds, um, you know, single parent uh, families to multi-level families to siblings. And uh, we've got players from all different backgrounds and played on uh, some great travel teams and some great high school teams. So I think, number one, it starts with uh, the, the personal side of things. I think that um, we allow our people at the University of Florida to come in and be who they are and hopefully develop and grow and mature to be in a – you know, an outstanding person, um, an outstanding, you know, student, um, and an outstanding athlete. And I think that, you know, we've really, I've laid those pillars from day one. Um, you know, just the old, the whole overall culture in our program is very energetic. We, um, you know, it's, 
it's, I would consider us to be a lot more professional than I would collegiately. In other words, I mean that we allow each one of our players to, to, to do their own thing and to have their own um, way about them that, that fits uniquely within our, um, you know, within the culture of our program. But, you know, I've always said to our, our athletes that you have to get an A in something. You better be an A person, an A student, or an A athlete. And if you can be an A in all of those things, then you're one of the most special one percenters in the game. So we really take a lot of pride in, um, you know, just the culture and um, how we treat our athletes. You guys emphasize a team first mentality and the, the person over the player and just developing those traits to be a great woman, you know, on and off the softball field. What do you guys do at Florida to kind of facilitate that? Is it mental training? Is it um, just a lot of group bonding? Or how do you guys bring that out in your players? Yeah, I was in the locker room um, in, in, our, in 2007. It was the 2006-07 transitional year. And um, it was 2007. I had a, a really, actually, seven to eight. I had a really big recruiting class, one of the best recruiting classes in the country. And um, one of my first full recruiting classes where we actually got to recruit them from, you know, from the time they were at 16 and under ball all the way up. And I sat in the locker room and I told our players that, you know, at the time in 2008, there were two programs that clearly were at the top um, of the game. And um, we talked to our, our players about, you know, not only wanting to be one of the best programs in the country, but we're going to bring in players every single year. They're going to push you for your position and push you for greatness. And uh, the one thing that you're going to do is if I bring in a shortstop and you're the, you're the starting shortstop, you're going to train that athlete to take your position. And it's not about you training them to take your position. It's about you raising your level of play and you um, getting better. And that's the only way you're going to get better is to have people to push you. Um, but I think the, 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 you know, the, the program first type of a mentality is something that, you know, that I developed um, that I was taught when I went to Cerritos Community College, Cerritos JC in California. You know, when I played baseball there, and I, I was fortunate to play there for three years because I was so good of a baseball player, they, they decided to let me have an extra year. Um, that was obviously a joke. But, uh, you know, my, my thing was that, that they really taught us about responsibility and accountability. And when you – every one of our softball players has a job on this um, post-practice. Everybody has a job that they do to get the field back to, to, to the way it was when we started practice. And that was something I learned at Cerritos, that every player had to have responsibility and accountability. Um, and then we have accountability partners. So everybody's, you know, kind of been in charge of making sure that your roommate's not late. You know, I, I'm one of those that I'll be harder on a roommate who has, who left their, their teammate behind as opposed to the teammate that waited for their roommate because the roommate was late. You know, I think that there's something to be said about doing things and strength in numbers. Um, but I think the number one thing that I can say about our program that's really help this become a reality as opposed to just lip service is, um, you know, our, our what drives winning um, mentality that we worked with Brett Ledbetter and the what drives winning movement and, you know, really becoming understanding about the person versus the player. And the things that we've done that have become tangible are our, our community service efforts. We've really done a great job of embracing, um, you know, pediatric cancer um, surviving brain tumor kids with our friends of Jacqueline support and our friends of Jacqueline team. Um, Dennis Murphy, he's, he's been an unbelievable, um, you know, just a, a source of education and teaching us about, you know, what's necessary for kids to be able to recover, um, you know, from whether it be cancer, uh, brain tumors, or, you know, kids that just, you know, just have struggled in life. And um, that has really been a source, you know, Heather Braswell was our first um, friends of Jacqueline adoptee, and that made things more real than just talking about how much we want them to be good people and, you know, what the young kids aspire to be when they see Florida Gators, when they come in their uniforms and they come and cheer on the Gators because Heather, Heather is now, um, you know, not with us. To me, the game is bigger than any one individual and life is bigger than the game. And I think that our players have really embraced that and you know, really have taken their role as a student athlete and have given to a lot of kids and given to a lot of, you know, people to, to, to watch them play with the passion that they play with. But more than anything, it gives you inspiration and, and it gives you determination to keep doing things um, every single day, no matter how hard it is. Um, it's a lot easier to be a softball player than it is to, 
um, be a brain tumor survivor, be a cancer survivor, especially for a young kid and family. Sunflower Saturdays and drawing attention to pediatric cancer, helping everyone to, to see that it is bigger than the game. The Sunflower Saturdays is not about you know the Gators. It's more about the, the opportunity for us to support a cause that is very, very, very um, important to life for young kids that are, you know, that are, that are survivors and young kids that are fighters. And I think that's, that's really what it's all about. Yeah. It's what you do when, when no one's watching or when you think nobody's watching and that's, that's the character that you guys want to build and, and part of your foundation at your, yeah, your program. How can girls that want to come play for you and play at the university of Florida, what can they do to stand out? Yeah. You know, I think that, it's becoming a lot harder. There's so many, which I love. I mean, the growth of the game has been incredible. Yeah. My first recruiting trip that I ever took was in 1999, um, coaching softball. And um, the growth of the game is, is incredible um, to see how m- many athletes play softball, whether it be the pitching, the hitting, the base running. The athletes are unbelievable. Um, and the growth has been incredible. Um, I think the, the overall standard has changed at the, at the travel level as well. I mean, there's so many more travel teams and you know, larger national, um, you know, uh, different teams and organizations. And so there's a lot of competition amongst competition. But um, I try to recruit winners and players that play on winning teams, whether it be high school, whether it be, um, you know, whether it be recruiting kids that play on, 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 on unbelievable travel teams because they've been trained. Some of the best players that I've ever coached have been on teams where they haven't always been the best player on their own team. I think there's a lot to be said about learning how to compete. Peer pressure is a, is a, is a beast. And when you're on a team with, with tremendous athletes, and maybe you're the first, second, or third, or fourth player on the team, you know, there's a lot of competition to keep, keep being really, really good. But I think the training and the overall development is something that I've, I've really paid attention to when, when we got recruits. So, if, if I could give one piece of advice to any young person or any young you know, person or a young coach aspiring to, to build it, um, you know, play the best competition that you can. Practice is way more important than the games, but how you deal with failure, you know, that's life. And I think that you know, when you learn how to deal with failure, um, I think that that's when you become a true champion. It's easy to go out there and win and win and win and get a hit every time, but when you lose, when you um, don't perform to your best, you know, what kind of response do you have? What kind of response does your family have? What kind of response does your team have or your coaches have? And I think that there's a lot to be said about that because it, you know, Florida, whether it's a camera, whether it's the microscope, whether it's your coach, whether it's your peers, there's a lot of pressure on us daily to do things the right way. And just one slip up, a character slip up or say the wrong thing or, say something that's, you know, that's skewed in a different way. There's, there's, there's a lot of pressure to make sure that no matter what, there's always somebody listening and there's always somebody watching. With the pandemic going on, have you had to make any changes to the way that you're coaching or the way that you're running practice or anything like that? Yeah, there's a, it, everything's changed, to be honest with you. It, it, I, I told our players, I'm, I'm a very organized person. I usually have exactly what practices are going to be the Tuesday before the first game and you name it. So I'm a very organized person. I I had a very organized uh, scripted out recruiting schedule that we always, you know, typically go to and, and, you know, go out and recruit. Um, But I've adjusted really everything. And I've told our players that we're going to, we're going to live one week at a time. We're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. We're going to try to really do a good job of trying to stay present in the moment. We've really had to do a lot more stuff virtually, which I don't like. I, I really like, to be able to see your players' faces and their eyes and actually read, you know, between the lines a little bit. So um, I think the, the, the biggest difference is being able to figure out how to become uh, a clear communicator. From a recruiting standpoint, um, you know, again, it's changed. And I feel terrible for the way that, you know, that, you know, our 2021 class all signed. They've all been, they've all been here before and they've all, you know, been around us. So it wasn't like they're strangers, but they didn't get the official visits and they weren't able to get the things that, you know, that in my mind they deserve, you know, that they, they worked so hard to get to. So, um, you know, trying to figure out how to make their transition from high school to college to be a little bit, uh, and have a little bit more fun and figure out a way if there is a way futuristically to, to get them on campus on, on a quote, um, you know, quote unquote official visit like atmosphere. Um, and then recruiting itself overall, it's been a lot more virtually. You, you, you try to sell your school virtually. You, 
Um, you know, paying attention to some of the, the travel organizations, because to me, I think the cream rises to the top. And if you're one of the best players on a, on a really good travel team, you're a good player. And, and I, I know that that's the way it's always been. Some of the best travel coaches in the history of the game, you know, have filtered out a lot of the players before they become, you know, college age recruiting ready. And um, that's the, in my mind, that's, that's where we're headed again, futuristically, is that, you know, that, that these players are going to be able to be allowed to play 14s and be the best 14 team and then move up to 16s and then move up to 18s. And then from there, you're going to be ready to start getting recruited again. And I think that's a, I think it's a great fundamental developmental model. I think that's a really, really solid way to do it. What are some of the differences that you've seen from the girls coming from travel ball and now entering into your program as, as freshmen? Like, have you seen any, any big challenges for them? What, what do they have to go through? Yeah, well, I think if you, if you take the pandemic and push it aside and say, okay, it didn't happen, you know, I think that all freshmen come in and they, they have a, a transitional moment. Some, for some of them, it's a week. For some of them, it's a month. Some of it's a year. Some of it's a semester. Everybody has a transitional moment where you're coming into a program and you're trying to reestablish your identity. And, and hopefully along the way, you keep your personality, you keep the things that you're always good at, and you just get better and better and better. For some, it takes longer than others. You know, I think that there's, there is that. Um, you know, and I think in, in now push it, squeeze it with the pandemic. Now you've got more players on rosters. You've got larger age gaps between the freshmen and your quote unquote seniors. Cause now you've got, uh, you know, your fifth year seniors or a lot of them. And so I think there's, um, there's a cultural potential divide. You know, when you've got younger players and older players, older players are thinking about future and resumes and job building. And um, some of them are thinking about getting married and others, all kinds of things. And then you get the freshmen coming in there. Shoot. They're, they, they don't, they don't really care. They want to know what's, what's for dinner on Thursday. And how do I read this practice plan? Or do I, am I, Where's my syllabus? You know, all the things that, that, that you have to learn. Um, so I think that the, the, this year in the pandemic has been fun. I mean, I, I, I really uh, applaud my freshmen. Um, you know, I told them that thankfully this isn't just the University of Florida issue. That every freshman across the country is going through the same thing. It's about as non-fun of a freshman year as you probably could ever have. And so you, I applaud my seniors and my freshmen alike because I think our players have done a good job of trying to include all the different classes. Um, I don't feel like I've got my freshmen are only doing things by themselves. My seniors are only doing things by themselves. I think I, I, I've noticed, um, you know, safely that our younger and older players are doing things together and our older players are doing a great job of showing our younger players how to do it. And our younger players are doing a good job and have enough confidence to where they can um, feel, feel like they can keep themselves included in some of those things um, that, you know, that, that could create a, like I said, create a, cultural divide or create a chemistry issue. I, I think that we've done a, as good a job as you possibly can. What's it like playing in the SEC conference, one of the best conferences in college softball? Well, every pitch matters. Um, I can tell you that, you know, when it can be one pitch and it's the difference between you winning the SEC and you losing the SEC, number one, it starts with your fans. I mean, everybody is passionate. The rise of football and the BCS and the college football playoff, the rise of football has carried over into softball. And I think that the fans are just as passionate about football as they are about softball. And um, I think that, you know, the, the, the brand that I'm wearing, I've got the stuff on my shirt and my hat. Everybody comes to the ballparks with their brands. They come with their, whether it be the Gators logo or whether it becomes the Gator head logo or whatever school you go to in the SEC very passionate about their softball teams and we get a lot of fans. I mean, I can't tell you, we, we, you know, this is a bragging moment, but we, we've set records at every stadium we've ever been to with their largest fan, their largest crowd. And everybody's coming out there for the most part to either watch the Gators or watch their team beat the Gators, you know? And um, I think that it's been a very, very fun, you know, I remember when there were only a few teams in the league that were good and Florida wasn't one of them. And, uh, and now you got every team in the league that could, that could win a regional and, and win a super regional and go to the College World Series. So it starts with the fans, great players, um, you know, really good officiating, a, a league that cares about everything. The SEC commissioner um, is unbelievable. Greg Sankey has done a great job of building softball to another level and making it important. And, um, and then you have the great student athletes, unbelievable athletes that we have. 
And then I think that from, from all 13 of our schools that play softball, you've got coaches that know what they're doing. And um, they, they, they really have a fundamental plan to try to train their athletes. And, you know, I think that uh, – and, and then the administration, of course, and obviously that ties in with Greg Sankey. But um, I, playing in the SEC is a lot um, – it's a lot different than probably everybody would see it to be. They, they probably think that all of us coaches are arm wrestling before the game and things like that. It's not always like that. Um, but I definitely feel like there's a love-hate in this league. Um, and most of it's love to win, hate to lose. And uh, I, I applaud our, I applaud from top to bottom just how this operation is. It's softball is a big deal. Yeah, there's nothing like it. And speaking about that, you guys have had the opportunity to play in five women's college World Series championship series, and you won two of those back to back years in 2014, 2015. What was that experience like for you and your team? It was unbelievable to watch from my standpoint. I can't imagine being there in Oklahoma City. Winning the championship in 2014, winning the championship in 2015, they were both unique. 2014 was an unbelievable feeling. Um, I loved that team. I loved those players. They pushed me to, to the edge and everything that I've ever done, from recruiting to practice. Um, I can tell you, we went paintballing. And we went, uh, and, and our players are like, they're not so competitive. And it was so much fun to watch that team hoist a national championship trophy. The night before the championships, well, the, the night before the, the, the last game of the College World Series championships, I told my team that after we had won the first game, I said, hey, I want you guys to all go back to your room, and I want you to envision how you're going to dogpile. And I want you to envision, and I want you to actually practice it. I want you to be really good at it so when the time comes, you can get out there and celebrate to your best because I can tell you, I was on top of the dog pile and it was, and I never practiced it, but it was the most fun thing that I can tell you that I've ever done as a, as a, as a player to win a national championship. It's, 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 it's the best. And it's, that was the biggest life changing event for me as a player is winning a national championship. Um, as a coach, um, I just really embraced my players and I can tell you, I, can, I looked them in the eyes. I watched their celebration. I just sat there as a, as a happy parent watching them and just enjoying that moment. And then the second year in 2015 was a, was a lot tougher. There's a, you know, all you hear about is repeat, repeat, defend, defend, and all the other things. And, and, and we probably put more pressure on ourselves than the media did. But uh, I think ultimately that was more of an exhale of relief. Like whew, finally we got this done and, you know, we can, we can almost move on to the next. But um, a lot of fun memories. Uh, and every time I think about those championships, um, I don't think about the trophy or the ring or the other stuff. Only thing I can see is those players' eyes, their faces, their joy, um, the, the, the happy tears. And, and then we got an opportunity. Um, Terry Braswell, Heather Braswell, is one of the girls we adopted in 2009. And she and her sister came to the national championship. And I thought that was a really cool moment for us to share um, in Heather's legacy of winning our first national championship. She died that year of March of of 2014 and we actually won the championship the same year so there was a lot of symbolism and, wow. and a very emotional uh, celebration it's absolutely an incredible feeling and, and and just watching it too we you could feel it like you you wanted florida to win like it was so exciting to watch those games year in and year out it's been so much fun um i i wanted to bring up another another factor about all this but um you, you, you kind of touched on it, but you guys have so much fun. And all of your players, they say, oh my gosh, Coach Walton's the best. He's so cool. He's so much fun. And I had the opportunity to talk to one of your former players and current assistant coaches, Amanda Lorenz, and she wanted me to bring up back in 2018, I guess before regionals, you guys maybe had a little tarp slip and slide or something. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, at the end of the day, I think that this is the one thing that I love about interviews when they when you when you're not interviewing things in regards to the competition like I'm not going to win a game today or lose a game today and so people can see a side of me that's 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 maybe not the same I am very competitive I love to have fun I try to make it as fun as possible I talk a lot of smack when I hit ground balls but that was one of the cool moments it was our NCAA practice day and I mean we had to get the tarp on and it was pouring and I was like hey guys let's get out there and do a tarp slide and they looked at me like no way we're not going to do that and I ran out there and slid across the top and had a blast. I mean, we had a blast. So 
Um, yeah, at the end of the day, you, you've got to pick and choose your moments. But I think that, you know, if, if, if this is just, if this is work, if this is a job and you make it like that, then, you know, then the players are never going to have any fun. And um, I think ultimately just trying to pick your moments of, of when there's some opportunities to, to have a great, uh, have a great time and um, be yourself. And sometimes maybe step out of character a little bit, but um, you know, I, I'm as, I'm, I'm just like everybody else's dad. I, um, I have fun. I'm pretty sarcastic and, you know, I, I hate to lose though. I think hate, I mean, that's the one thing my son said to me last night, uh, they played a game. They didn't play very well. And I was talking to him and he said, Hey dad, you remember when you lose and I drive home with you and, and, and I don't talk to you, I leave you alone. He said, well, I want that moment right now too. And I went, you know what? That's a great analogy, son. So, um, but I do, I definitely like to have fun and, um, I'm very competitive. That's what it's all about. We play the game because we love it. And that's what we need to keep exuding in ourselves and, and showing that every single time, you know, you step out on the field or you, you just got to love it. So I'm glad that you guys have been able to balance all that. What is your favorite part about coaching? Well, you mentioned Amanda Lorenz and I can tell you that, you know, some of my favorite parts about coaching are, are, are coaching players that match your expectations. You know, Amanda Lorenz, she wants to win. She wants to be the best. She wants to be, she wants it. I really love coaching players that, I mean, they, you can just see it in their face. They want it and they, they want to be pushed and they want to be pushed to the best. And um, they take a lot of pride in getting better. And, um, you know, the, the difference between Amanda now and Amanda as the player is now she, to me, one of the coolest moments ever was when Jamie Hoover, uh, Amanda Lorenzo's senior year, got the game-winning base hit um, to send us to the College World Series and to watch Amanda score and celebrate and then celebrate her teammates. Well, now I'm in the coach's office and now she's celebrating moments, whether it be one of our players getting a bunt down or and she knows she did, and she knows how hard she's been working. Like, She's just able to see things now from a different perspective. But my favorite thing about coaching, especially coaching the Gators, is recruiting players um, that are far greater athletes than I ever was, but they can match my intensity of how hard it's going to take to work to become your, your absolute best, not the absolute best. It's different. Your absolute best. And I, I love coaching players that have lofty goals and expectations for themselves. That's what it's all about. What are some of the other traits that you hope to instill in your girls so that when they are done playing softball or done playing for you, that they can take into real life? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. I think the, I think originally when you first started, you, you just think about this as softball. It's like just, it's just softball. I want them to be, I want them to be able to get good bunts down, field ground balls, make the routine plays, be able to hit, be able to hit in clutch moments. And that's all it was. But as you've done this more and more and more, and you recognize that no matter how many games you win, nothing changes in life. You still put your, your right leg in your pant leg, you put your left leg in your pant leg, and you button it up the same every day, whether you win a national championship or not. So I think the, the biggest things that I look for is players that do it the right way. They don't take shortcuts. They don't make excuses. Um, and what I want is I want them to be self-sufficient. I want them to be able to, to go in and whether it's be a mom, whether it's be a um, to be a wife, be a, a teacher, a, a doctor. I, I want them to be the best, be their absolute best. And I have players now, and this is, this is you know, more of the, this is the gray hair side coming out of me. I have players that are doctors or dentists or lawyers or teachers or coaches. And, and the one thing that I see in them is that um, they're, they're really passionate about what they do and they take a lot of pride in themselves. And um, I think that's to me, the biggest win in everything that I do is that, um, that the, the players embody doing things the right way and the players embody living their life to the fullest and having no regrets. But I'd say the one characteristic I really, really want, and it's the same thing I want on my own daughter, be self-sufficient, be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, that you don't need anybody else to do it for you. You can do it yourself. And I think that's the, the empowering part of being the, the head softball coach at the University of Florida. It's so cool to be able to see them turn into the incredible woman that they are today. I've had some special girls come through this program that have grown up to be women that are far better at most things than I ever would have been as a player, as an athlete, as a person. And 
Um, they've taught me so much. And I can tell you that's one thing that's pretty cool is that I can sit back in my chair and look out my window to, my, to our field. And um, I can think about all the wonderful people that have impacted my life in a positive way. And um, that's what it's all about. It's an incredible accomplishment we've been able to do at that program. Well, this is the part of Hay Bucket where we have a little bit of fun. So this is our speed round. We're going to ask you just three quick questions and we'll see what we get. First question, okay. Coach Walton, do you have any pregame rituals like a coffee drink or anything that you like to do before, before a game? Oh, God. you know what? I, I like to, and this is obviously a home event, but at home I like to brush my teeth and take a shower before we play every game. After batting practice, it's, it's just a norm, I guess. <laughs> Perfect. All right, next question. Was there any coach or anyone that you have modeled your coaching style after? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, like I said, my, my impact was, was huge. Um, as a younger player, um, I was – Dave Serrano was probably the biggest influence in how I uh, became what I am. Um, not only as a, as a, as a coach, but as a player. So I'd say Dave Serrano, who was my um, pitching coach at Cerritos, uh, JC. Um, the, the, the coach that I was the most thankful for was, uh, was a high school coach that I only had for a semester. His name was Tommy Edwards. Um, he drove me over to Cerritos JC and got me my first opportunity to, to, to do life after high school. Um, but Dave Serrano has had probably the biggest impact in my, um, in my, my coaching career. He's the Northridge coach now. For he coaches at Northridge baseball. He was at Tennessee before that, and so he's he's obviously a, you know, he's, a he's a very well respected uh, baseball Division One baseball coach. But um, for me personally, he's just he's done a lot. That's so cool. Um, all right, if you're not coaching, recruiting, watching softball, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I like to uh, I, I I like to go to the lake. So. Um, I like to boat, um, wakeboard, uh, tube, um, sometimes ski, but I'm not as good at that. But uh, definitely, I like I love driving the boat, pulling, pulling, pulling the kids, pulling my players sometimes, but pulling the pulling my kids around the, around the lake. That's my that's my favorite. That's so fun. And also, shout out to your son. Big congrats to him for just committing to play baseball at University of Alabama at Birmingham. That's so incredible. Congrats to your whole family. Yeah, thank you. I read something the other day where, you know, what is it, 2% of all high school um, softball and baseball players, 2% go Division One. So it's a, a huge moment for my son and, and, you know, just watching his progression and development and growth. It's been a really good accomplishment for him. I'm really proud of him. Yeah, that's huge. Congrats. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an absolute privilege to be able to talk to you and pick your brain about the game. And I'm sure everyone who's watching will learn so much just like I did. So thank you so much for all of your time today. It was, it was a pleasure. Well, it was great. And I think one thing I'd say is that, you know, coaching softball and coaching any sport is, 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 is just takes – just a little bit of common sense. And I ask my players a lot of questions because I want them. I, I always tell them your players, I'm the coach. I don't want to, I don't have all the answers. I want to help you get where you want to get to. So um, as a coach, don't feel like you have to have all the answers, just kind of help, uh, you know, got, steer the ship a little bit. But um, I think it's really important for me to learn from them. You've done a pretty good job of steering the ship at Florida. Excited to watch you guys this season. <laughs> Thank you. Go Gators. Thank you guys so much for watching. For more content like this, be sure to check out fastpitchfilms.com. I'm your host, Sammy Glantz. See you guys next time.